gosh, I am so excited. I'm here listening, tuning in live from South Florida. My name is Ann Cosman. I'm one of the educator innovation leads on Team Flipgrid, and I'm so excited to welcome you back to day two of Educator Innovation Week. We have an incredible live panel discussion all about storytelling today. But first, I want to invite my colleague, Adam. Adam, pop in here and join me. Hey, Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, hi. Hey, I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited for today's broadcast. As Ann mentioned, all about storytelling. We have three incredible educators um, who we were just in, in the green room, as they say, um, chit-chatting a bit. And you're all in for just, again, an, an amazing conversation. And so... Yeah. We're so excited, but as Anne mentioned, we also have uh, an introduction to make. So Anne, do you yeah. want to? So we want to invite our newest teammate to the screen. Bring her in, bring her in. Hey, Hi. you guys. Hi, Hi. thanks for having me. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for letting me do a little cameo today. Of course. <laughs> well, we wanted to give you an opportunity, not only where we could introduce you to the community, but have you say hi. So let us know who you are and where you're doing where you're hey. from. Yeah, I'm Jen. I'm in San Francisco, California. Um, and I'm just happy to be here and join the Flipgrid team. I'm so excited to get to know the community, uh, get to chat with you all. And I am particularly excited about the storytelling panel today because that is something near and dear to my heart. Yeah, so you're coming in as sort of like the director of storytelling and are super passionate about authentic voice and the power of story. So tell us a, a little tiny bit about that passion of yours. Yeah. How cool is that title, though, by the way? I mean, that's like, is that like if you're like a kid and you're like, you can be a director of storytelling. Right. And you're like, OK, yeah, let's do that. I love <laughs> um, it. I love it. So very happy with that. But yeah, I think yeah, storytelling is so powerful. I mean, to me, uh, the first thing I think of is the power of storytelling and building empathy and fostering connection. Uh, good storytelling has a very, very powerful ability to open our hearts and our minds to experiences that on our own. You know, how could we ever truly understand someone else when we don't know their story? And when done right, um, understanding the stories gives a voice to the voiceless. Um, yeah. And that's really important to me when I think about it as a, a professional uh, in a storytelling capacity, air quotes. Um, and um, is just like the responsibility and really the privilege that I have to be in a position where I can amplify stories, um, especially educator stories, especially now. Uh, I've just been really drawn to Flipgrid's mission to empower every voice and so inspired by the educator community and the students in it. And just like really humbled to be here and just excited to start working hard and, and tell those stories and give them justice. Well, we're so excited to welcome you, your skill, <laughs> your talent. But your passion, not only to Team Flipgrid, but to this incredible Flipgrid for All community. And you mentioned amplifying the stories of educators. So, Jen, we're going to invite in our moderator. And I just want to say thank you for coming. And stick around because this is going to be an epic conversation. All right. <laughs> Ed, if whether, I mean, you're tuning in, obviously. Uh, hello, everyone on Facebook or YouTube. But follow Jen on the Twitter. She yes. So, yeah. The Flipgrid Twitter community, and uh, I would love to talk to everyone. So message me. Let's chat. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Jen. Bye. Thank you. I'll be here. Bye. And so, friends, with that, I want to get right to this, and I want to introduce our incredible moderator today. She is an educator, a librarian, a mover, a shaker. She is the author of Hacking School Libraries, Christina Holzweiss, my friend. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Anne. How are you? Good. I'm great. We're Actually, I'm from Long Island, New York, and you can see in my window, we're waiting for the storm. So we're bracing ourselves, and oh I'm so gosh. excited to be here sharing stories and talking with great educators and talk about Flipgrid and amplifying student voice. You are like the perfect one to moderate this panel, so I'm so excited to have you join us. Um, I want to invite Kamal Preet to the screen. Kamal is an incredible educator, a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, a National, Ge <laughs> National Geographic Certified Teacher, a Minecraft Global Mentor, and Sunshine Personified. Kamal, welcome to the panel. Thank you so much, Anne. I'm so excited to be here with you. You guys totally rock it, and I truly believe in the power of uh, of uh, Flipgrid and how it empowers each and every student learner. 
Oh my gosh, we're so excited to welcome you here. We have another amazing educator. You could call her a difference maker. She is super passionate about reading, writing, poetry. Everybody meet Claudia Daniels. Hey. <laughs> Hey. I'm so excited to be here. I'm not for sure which side is my best side. I'll stay here. Oh, but, uh, I want to thank y'all. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. I'm excited about a dialogue about um, student voice, about voice, I mean, about stories and holding other people's stories. And Claudia, you're also known as the book pusher. So I love that display <laughs> behind you are some books, pieces of literature that you've probably used with your learning community. And I just can't wait to dig into this. So yeah, Christina, you know, why don't, why don't you kick off the conversation? I cannot wait to begin. I am so excited. I, you know, I was an English teacher for years and a, a school librarian, so I think it's really important to tell stories. And I was that kid in the back of the room. I was that shy, quiet kid who didn't share my story. So I really think, and especially now today, more than ever, we need to hear other people's voices and their points of view to understand them. So how can you empower every voice in unique, creative ways in your classroom and beyond? Kamal and Claudia, I can't wait to hear your answer to that. How can you empower every voice? Um, well, I'll go ahead and get started. Well, I think um, one way to strategically empower every voice is, you know, regardless of what setting you're in, is to provide a host of windows and mirrors, books that you strategically choose that represent your students and people they may encounter with. So just having representation of various texts is one way to empower students because they'll see themselves. Totally, totally. In, in school libraries, it's so important to have that full collection. And in classroom libraries, too, I saw pictures of your classroom library. Amazing. Stories everywhere. Kamal, what about those world stories? How can we empower every voice in ways around the world? Around the world, okay, by giving children a platform uh, uh, to share their stories, and uh, that one of those platforms happens to be Flipgrid. Uh, not only uh, is it a very secure platform where uh, children are um, they feel protected, and um, and also giving them uh, the platform and also giving them the opportunity to share their stories and giving them n number of ways in which they can express themselves. So uh, Flipgrid actually fits the bill uh, perfectly. It, uh, it gives you a secure platform. It gives you n number of tools, whether you want to speak. So uh, you can talk uh, uh, in Flipgrid. And uh, if, you are, uh, if you are more of a creative person, you can create an entire world in uh, uh, using the stickers and so many other options which are available in case you are uh, more of a, a writer. Okay, Like uh, Christina, you mentioned that uh, you are the shy types. Okay, I, I, I'm like you. I, I, I'm the shy type. Even now, I'm very shy. It doesn't appear that way, but uh, I would rather choose to write. And again, Flipgrid gives you that opportunity to write your story. It's got so many things over there. I wanted to, to two things, Kamal, everything that you're saying reminds me so much of like a flip emoji scene or the power of an emoji or the power of a visual element that can get added in. And that's one thing I personally love so much about the Flipgrid camera is it's pathways, it's possibilities, whether it's text-based, visual-based, you could toggle off that audio. So you talk about having a written element or a visual element. There's so many possibilities. And Claudia, hearing what you said about windows and mirrors and sliding glass doors, I know I've heard about that. It's the work of Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, right? Yeah. And I learned about it from Ken Shelton, but giving students rich, diverse literature to see themselves in it or to experience it in terms of almost like walking a mile in somebody else's shoes. That's a very rich way to make those authentic connections to text, right? And that's a good point because what Kamal just said, I didn't even think about it too, but um, allowing students when they share their stories on Flipgrid through either the podcast or through the video, when, when other students see their stories or hear their stories, it gives the other students more opportunity to be empathetic of the stories because they'll say, oh, wow, that's why. And they'll make connections within the community. Kamal, I'm glad you brought that part up. Uh, 
seriously and uh, the thing that you mentioned about uh, having these uh, uh, windows across okay, which gives you which it it allows us to peek into different cultures uh, where we can share where we can exchange stories with each other like if we um, uh, I don't know. Flipgrid is coming to mind over and over again. You have this, or you have this thing of uh, grid pals, where you can connect with teachers in other parts of the world, and the the uh, the classes once they're connected, they can share their cultures, they can share their stories with each other, and it, it need not just be a cultural exchange. It can be uh, uh, topic specific. It can be subject specific. So you might be talking about, let's say, um, uh, like. like where we like what we did where we uh, wanted to study about habitats so uh, we connected with teachers in different uh, parts of the world in different habitats okay so um, and the children had to tell what do they see what are the animals that they see uh, out in their uh, country what are the plants that they see in their country and when they did that they shared their stories mm -hmm. so we exchange stories with each other and we got to know about not just the habitat but also the culture of uh, between the uh, the two countries that's exactly what uh, what comes to my mind when Claudia <laughs> made windows opening windows to the world I remember having, being a kid in elementary school, being having a pen pal, and I would wait for weeks for that letter to come, and then I would write something back, and by the time I wrote back, it was over. <laughs> it was not immediate. But I, with Flipgrid, like you said, we can connect people. You know, you know, we some of us live in diverse communities, and some of us don't. Some of us live in different countries. Some of us live right next door to one another. But with Flipgrid, we can be one big global community together and share those stories. So I really think Claudia and Kamal, you're doing great work having your kids share their stories and learning about other stories because that's how we grow together and connect and build relationships. I love that. So Christina, why don't you lead us into Q2? And um, I, I have a question and I think it might work well in this section too. So I'm gonna follow up and you lead us off. Okay, so the next question is, when we think about stories or the power of a story, what does that even mean in a classroom or a learning community? The power of stories, what does that even mean? Now, Claudia, well, I, I know you have lots I of books know, behind you. <laughs> I was trying to be patient because I didn't want to be like, yeah, I know you're, you're waiting. I know you're right there. Yeah, the power of a story. You know what? I'll go to this one. Joel Parker Rhodes wrote Ghost Boys. And so Ghost Boys is a project, one of the project lit books, but it talks about how um, a young man was treated and the impact it had on him and his family. When, my, when two of my students read it and they did like a book recommendation and was just talking authentically about the text, they said, wow, I never knew a group of people were treated this way. So then they read other books and other books. And now they're like um, they're like uh, sanctuaries, if you will. Jason Reynolds talks about how we're sanctuaries, how we can hold people's story and um, be like a bouncing wall, if you will, for someone who shares their story and you listen and you share your story with them. But I think the power of a story lets you see like the um, the, the, the good, the injustices, the pain, the hope that other groups of people experience so that you can share those stories when necessary, if that makes sense. Definitely, and I think through a book, it's enjoyable and you can learn through it and it's not intimidating for a child. Watching the news, reading, you know, reading the websites, those are all those things, but through a story, they can connect with their hearts. You know, yeah, they, and they, like you said, with a book, they can close it when they had just enough. Mm -hmm. You know, and then and go back to it. Like, it's just everything. Mm -hmm. Kamal, what do you think about that? The power of a story in a learning community. Uh, I would totally mirror what Claudia is saying. Uh, seriously, okay, when when you hear these children sharing their uh, stories, okay, it shows them as a person. So uh, there would be points. If you there would be points that where you can empathize with them. Okay, so this is what probably what she's thinking right now, and uh, there might be other things which are completely new to you. Okay, to which you get introduced uh, uh, through which you get introduced to different cultures. Okay, so you get more accepting to those. Uh, differences and uh, uh, yes you get and you eventually as we have learned as a class you 
eventually get to see how that in spite of all our differences, which are we are more or less the same. If you look at children, they, they share the same likes, the same dislikes, and all this is reflected through their stories when they talk about themselves, when they talk about their classrooms, when they talk about their environments. Their stories, the stories of children in different parts of the world are more or less the same. What you said just resonated with me. When you read about the horrible events in history, you read about them in history books and their numbers. And I, that's why history didn't interest me. But when I hear the story of a person who went through an event in history, that inspires me. Kamal, that is a wonderful point. Yeah, uh, Ma'am Fox has this book, Whoever You Are. It encapsulate what you just said, Kamal, like whoever you are, wherever you are, all around the world, talks about our differences and our similarities. So the power of the book, it connects us as a community. I think there's beauty in that too. It's celebrating the differences and recognizing that each person brings their unique self to that. And, and Christina, you made it like it's this heart connection, right? And so not only through literature, not only through shared experience, it, yesterday we talked about SEL and the focus on relationships and community. And so I love, I love that that Jen, when she was being introduced at the start, she's talked about using stories as connectors to open hearts and open minds, right? Um, the thing that I was gonna pop in with the conversation specifically too, for Claudia, you talk about in, a, in your learning community, and I know you've done this on Flipgrid, is you have your students doing book podcasts. And you I do know, it because of you. <laughs> Well, you do it in such an amazing way. You inspire me to continue to create, but I just, I thought maybe you could speak to that and how you're using Flipgrid to create those book talks. It's beyond a book talk. It's a legitimate podcast that your scholars are creating. I'm trying to tell you. So what happened was, and this is really short, and mentioned do a podcast. I'm like, girl, I ain't never did a podcast, but I was going to try it because that's the power of yet. I haven't done one yet. So I did a podcast for Anne. So then I was like, you know what? Let me ask one of my students to do one with us. So we use Barbara D's book. Maybe he just likes you. So uncomfortable book, so relevant book, so necessary. We did the podcast and it was amazing for the students who don't want to see themselves, you know, but they, but the screen is there and we were able to have, we don't practice them. We're able to have authentic conversations. So then Renee Watson slid into my DMs on Twitter, like, girl, I want to talk to you and your friend about my book. Um, some places more than others. This is an award-winning author. She wanted to talk to us. So we have so we have a um, podcast called um, uh, Sitting on the Porch with Notorious Pusher, my best friend and I, talking about books and sharing them with students. So the podcast component is amazing. And then I have a host. So when my students come the first day of school, I have a host of book recommendations for them to choose from, letting them choose versus me just pushing books that I think they should read, but they have options from myself, from other colleagues and from students who they know who are like peer readers. So the podcast option, amazing. I love it. I love it. And you used the word authentic. And I think that's something that all four of us as educators agree providing those authentic opportunities to share authentic voice. And it's, Christina, you're like brilliant at this because not only is your library also connected to this maker space, it's built in for students, it's built in for educators, but it's the power of pathways and possibilities and celebrating that authentic journey. So I think that's something that you do brilliantly in the work that you do. Um, you talk about hacking school libraries, right? So how does that look in your learning community? Well, you know, I, my kids love using Flipgrid and it, it's an easy in for any child. It does not matter about their abilities. It doesn't matter about their age. Everyone can can speak their voice. And like we've said, you could use the stickers. I mean, years ago, I was using the little emoji puppets just to hide kids' faces, or I would have them hold up the book in front of them. And so, you know, we, we can find any other, we, we can find hacks to anything. Um, again, we had to find pathways and possibilities. We had to give kids choice and empower them. It's not we're the sage on the stage and we're telling them what to do. We're giving them 
a whole buffet of possibilities, they choose. They choose and that makes them powerful. I wish I was a student now. I wish I was back in school as a kid. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm like, my mind is exploding with ideas and possibilities. I know Adam just popped up that, that quote, uh, well, a statement from Amber Trout, voice and choice, right? Voice and choice, but it's pathways, it's possibilities, and it's honoring that authentic voice because it's every diverse, unique, incredible, amazing individual in our community that, that contributes to that community, you know? Kamal, how are your students doing that in your in your classroom and around the you know and when they're connecting with others around the world? How are they empowered to share um, their through voice and choice? Uh, okay, uh, I'll just use a couple of uh, examples, uh, some things that we've uh, recently completed. Okay, so uh, that's that's how I use uh, storytelling in my science classes. So if you generally think of science, okay, it's very precise. It's very uh, it's there's not much scope of uh, creativity and uh, uh, prose coming into science. Uh, uh, so one activity that we finished was uh, we had talked about animal adaptations. And uh, and um, so I made a grid and the students were tasked uh, to read up, do research on animal adaptations. And then they had to come up with a story of a particular, uh, they had to create a story using the animal adaptations and formulate it in the form of a riddle. So. Um, Everybody, I had this entire class uh, full of 40 students coming up with 40 different riddles and all uh, formulated in the form of a story. I'll give an, a very simple example. OK, um, um, so one girl did that and I'm not going to uh, I, I'm not I'll not be able to do justice to what to the way she expressed herself. Uh, she said that there's a magical kingdom and it it is a dark and gloomy kingdom and the darkness is the darkness is so stark that uh, my brethren they choose to close their eyes however they've got well they've got um, a highly developed uh, sense of hearing which allows them to fly their way through the uh, pathways in the kingdom and um, and the children had to guess it and uh, any guesses what that might be I'm like oh. waiting for the review. Yeah, I'm like, what's the end of the story? I want to know. <laughs> it's a bat. They had to find oh. oh. so this magical thing, okay, a magical oh. kingdom, okay, uh, where the animal in question was a bat. And they got to learn about oh. so many animal adaptations. Mm -hmm. I love it, that because you know I am not a science person and I love learning through stories. I would love to be a student in your class. That would appeal to me. Absolutely. Children it. are so very creative. You just have to, like you said, okay, um, you just have to give them the, uh, the platform. You have to give them an authentic audience and you have to give them the freedom, the freedom to express themselves by choosing the way in which they are most comfortable. And like Flipgrid epitomizes that. Empower yeah. free forms. Yeah, I like too how Flipgrid, it can connect us to authors using Twitter because we've been able to just to connect um, with a hope we've connected with Jerry Craft, the author of New Kid, super diverse. You know, we shared his book recommendation. We connected with uh, Roll With It, um, a young girl who um, has MS. The power of Twitter and Flipgrid sharing stories has connected us with authors and students can see authors who look like them so they know hey that could be my next move i love that it, it speaks to um sort of like the collective group think of better together right and educators who you know we whether we're in a classroom setting at a school building in an e-remote learning hybrid situation the whole fact that people share so generously on social media, you have access to folks like incredibly inspiring authors who are writing these stories that transform, you know, it, it's the hearts and minds, right? Um, the better together mindset, and that's why I'm so thankful to have you all share your voice on this on this panel, because we're, we're sharing ideas, right? Like it's endless possibilities for the ways we can empower our scholars 
But you sharing and me listening or you sharing and me listening is that zing that sparks a whole new thing for me, you know? Exactly, exactly. When I, when I hear all of your ideas, I it starts, I hear, you know, I feel like the synapse is going. And I create my own stories in there by listening to yours and connecting. It's like, the, like a group vibe. You're saying the group think. It's like that, that vibe you feel in your classroom and connecting with others. So the last question we have, in what ways do we provide the opportunity for students to share their own unique stories as they own their learning journey? Their own unique stories. How do we provide the opportunity? I think we can do a host of things. One that came to mind when Kobe Bryant's passing, he did that basketball piece. Mm -hmm. And so we used his um, his basketball piece and they made a connection to themselves like mm -hmm. tennis, like deer tennis, deer karate, deer whatever it was. And they used his piece as a mentor text. And we got to see what students love themselves. They shared it on Flipgrid and then us listening and responding, us learning mm -hmm. about students that we didn't even know was their passion. Wow. I think that's right. You, 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 you. When you speak to people and you listen, you always learn something new, and you learn something new about yourself. Yes. Yep. Kamala, what about your students? Okay. Uh, so again, coming to science. Okay. Uh, what we do is, um, uh, I had this thing on climate change and on uh, climate change and plastic pollution. I am passionate about that, and so are my children. So uh, we had the children uh, to uh, select one photograph, which, in their opinion, uh, showcased uh, showcased the uh, the situation of plastic pollution right now, and uh, they had to justify why they had selected that particular by that particular photograph mm -hmm. so you could understand you could they had to articulate their understanding their uh, their thinking and you could see what actually appeals to the students and when mm -hmm. we connected with uh, students in different countries you could see that yes we are facing the same problem it is a global problem and you get to introduce the sdgs through that story just listening to both of you, Claudia and Kamal, I'm thinking there must be ways for Claudia, you to bring nonfiction books to connect with your fiction, and Kamal, for you to bring fiction books into your science classroom. I see synergy yeah. going on between this. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like this, that Prairie Lotus book by uh, Sue Parker Rose, she talks about the 1800s, and we need the, all that history part mm -hmm. for that text to even make sense. So, definitely intertwining informational and uh, narrative pieces. Right, because through stories, the kids see patterns and connections, and they remember. And if you can give it through multiple media, through audio, video, manipulatives, if they're making something, and nonfiction and fiction text. You know, my my kids, at, I have two boys. They love nonfiction. They love historical fiction. My daughter loves, you know, reading about, you know, fairies and princesses. Um, so, you know, taking, you know, taking those ideas and finding stories that are in different um, genres, finding stories in other cultures, and finding fiction and nonfiction will help. And, cre and creating new genres, allowing them and using Flipgrid as the platform, but creating new. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The creation process. Yes. I love that. Friends, this discussion has been not only in Inspiring. It's given me so many ideas. I've seen some of the chat. I've seen some of the chatter on social. And the the idea share and the group think here has been brilliant. So I just have to say, Christina, Claudia, Kamal, thank you so much for lending your voice to this discussion on storytelling. But beyond that, it's it's empowering every voice and, and having those opportunities to open hearts and minds. So Friends, thank you, thank you. And for those of you tuning in, um, we have a new challenge going out on social. So if you've been paying attention to the question of the day, today's question is how do you empower every voice in your classroom and beyond? So definitely check that out at the Flipgrid social handle. Christina's sharing it. Uh, we're all going to respond to it. Feel free to join that conversation and feel free to join in tomorrow again at 11 a.m. Central. We have an incredible panel for day three on diversity and inclusion.
Persian with Manny Curiel, Mary Alice Curran, Ramesh Langani, and Nairi Clark. And we just want to say thank you. And again, to our panelists on behalf of Team Flipgrid and friends and educators around the world, thank you for sharing your amazing ideas. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you. 